So we finally got our first official look at PowerBook 2 Go Season 4, and what I believe is a few pictures from Episode 1. Complex, Shadow and Act, and TV Line all dropped exclusives. There's new characters we're gonna break down and what they mean for the overall storyline. There's also a new description for the season, where the general theme is basically revenge. And there's a lot of details that they've given in regards to law enforcement, Davis McLean, and so much more. So make sure you guys stick with this video till the end, because I have gone through a lot of information from a lot of articles to kind of bring everything together in this particular breakdown. So in this video, we're going to be running through all these exclusive images, all the new details including the new players, as well as the new description that's been released for PowerBook 2 Ghost Season 4. The final season promises to be explosive, with high adrenaline twists and turns as everybody is on the hunt for revenge. Each character's respective motivations fuel their power of choice to dive deeper into the game, fight their way out, or walk a blurry line between the two. As family dynamics are tested and tensions reach their peak, the unpredictable nature of this season will have viewers questioning who you can trust and if your own family will betray you. So that's some new information and a new description that has been released, along with the pictures, and I will be referring back to this over the course of this breakdown, but let's start with Tariq and Brayden. We all know at the end of Go Season 3, they really found their backs against the wall. They just made it out by the skin of their teeth from the warehouse, and they're gonna have huge targets on their backs in 401. I think many of these pictures pretty much tells us they're gonna pick up from exactly where they left off. And if I were in Nomar's shoes, if I were in Kane's shoes, I'd be smelling blood. Tariq and Brayden are in a very vulnerable position at this moment in time, and they have to go in for the kill. However, this picture paints a different story, in my opinion anyway, of course, as always, drop your thoughts down below in the comment section. But this image right here is from episode 1, with Brayden and Tariq dressed in all black, wearing the exact same clothes as they are in this image, and they look like they're on demon time. They're dressed in all black, and even though I said they're gonna have targets on their backs, which I do think they will, I also feel like they're gonna go on the offensive. Sometimes the best form of defense is to attack. In no more in the Tahada's mind, they're gonna think Brayden and Tariq are weak, and I don't think they'd imagine Tariq and Brayden taking it to them, but they will. However, again, it does seem like there might be a bit of conflict between Tariq and Brayden. They may not agree with each other's ways of handling the situation. And I do think this will become a problem as the season progresses, especially when Brayden starts to become a little reckless. But with this particular picture, I think they're about to make a move, or they've already made the move. Either way, season 4 will make an explosive start and this scenario will be at the centre of it all. Now we've also got Brayden and Tariq taking a stroll at Stansfield, and look, I am going to be honest with you guys, I'm not too sure what to kind of make of this. They're in the midst of a war with the Tahadas, Nomar and Effie. Tariq has got nothing left with his trust fund, so they say, and that means he has no reason to stay at school. I did think we may have seen the last of Tariq at Stansfield, because I mean the whole reason he was at Stansfield was to graduate, so he could inherit his trust fund. Unless there is a twist to that particular story around Tariq's trust fund, which is the only thing I can kind of think of, because being at Stansfield it makes them a real easy target. However, on the flip side, just thinking about it for a moment, it might actually offer them a bit of protection, because I'm not too sure Nomar and the Tahadas can risk attacking Tariq and Brayden at Stansfield, so there's also that perspective to consider. But either way, why Tariq still at Stansfield and this situation around the trust fund, I'm expecting it to all be cleared up in episode 1, because these are the answers we need, especially because I'm not a big fan of Tariq being at Stansfield in the midst of a war. If you want to survive, you either a civilian or a gangster. There ain't no in-between. Stay in your lane, all in or all out. If you get distracted, you did. So it doesn't seem like Tariq has taken Tommy's advice on board. He did warn him, pick one. You're either a civilian or a gangster. Now, just sticking with Stansfield for a moment, we've got another image of a hip-hop group at Stansfield. We've got Brashandria in the back, but then we've got two new characters, L and Stokely. Now, it is said that L is the leader of this group. So very much like we saw in Raising Kanan with the girls group, we've got another one on PowerBook 2 Ghost, so let's see how they fare. Let's see also what they sing and rap about, because in Raising Kanan, Famous's bars were all around real life events, so could it be the same with this group? But those are two new characters to keep in mind, L and Stokely. Now moving away from Stansfield, which I think the storyline should have done anyway, let's go over to the other side and have a look at what's happening with the Tahadas. We've got Drew, Diana and Kane. Now I did mention before, we will most likely see the storyline picking up from right where they left off. But a few things I noticed in this image is, is that Drew has his hands behind his back. So I do wonder if he's been cuffed and whether they're at the station. So that's just something to keep in mind. But one of the major storylines around the Tahadas will be this betrayal, which is something new the description did tease, family betrayal and revenge. At some point Monet will question whether her kids are telling the truth. 
Kane will feel this betrayal, and it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when they find out, which is when I expect the chessboard to flip upside down. So if I were Drew and Diana, I'd definitely be looking over my shoulder. Now elsewhere with the Tahadas, we are also going to see a new character. This is Monet's cousin, Janet Stewart, which was Monet's surname before she got married to Lorenzo. But if some of you guys remember, Corny Kemp did tease we may be seeing more family members of Monet, so here's Janet Stewart. It seems like she's at Monet's bar, and I do wonder what her role is, why she's decided to come to Queens at this moment in time, and what questions will she have for Monet. Let's remember, Janet Stewart was the one who actually raised Zeke as her own, so naturally she would have had a bit of an attachment to Zeke, regardless of whether he was her own or not. So maybe we might hear some questions around Zeke. Maybe she's here because Moni's in a critical condition in hospital. So maybe she's come to visit her cousin. Either way, Janet Stewart is a new player to keep in mind. Now another new player to keep in mind is Anya Covington, Nomar's daughter. We've got Anya in what looks like a bit of a disagreement with Nomar, with Effie and Kane looking on in the background, and I do think Anya will be big trouble. The official synopsis for season 4 teased that Nomar is going to have her hands full with a bratty daughter, but also how Tariq and Brayden will target her. So I think Anya will be at the centre of this war. On one hand, we have Nomar who will want to keep her safe. Anya will probably go against her moms, and then you have Tariq and Brayden who will want to get to her to use her against Nomar. Now it has also been teased in this particular article that Anya has no knowledge of what kind of life her mother lives. So I do think that's something Brayden and Tariq could use, especially because they do have the knowledge that Nomar assassinated her father. Now a way in which they could actually get to her is maybe through Obi. We've got a picture of Nomar and Obi, with Obi having his gun towards someone, but let's remember what happened at the end of season 3. Obi did give Brayden the heads up about what they were about to do to Tariq. He felt as if he owed it to Tariq because he helped his family obtain some green cards. So maybe they get some more help from Obi, who knows if Effie kind of flips again, because looking at the description, there will be a lot of twists and turns. That's one thing we can guarantee with Ghost. At this moment in time it looks very highly unlikely that Effie would ever work with Tariq again, but you can never say never in the world of power. Things can change very quickly, new alliances can be formed, you can be betrayed in a heartbeat and so on. So definitely expect a lot of twists and turns in and around this situation with Nomar, Anya Covington and generally this whole war with the Tahadas, Tariq and Brayden. Now one character who's going to be facing a real uphill battle of his own is Davis McLean. We've got him with a gun in hand but who's pointing his gun towards who knows at this moment in time. But with Davis, I do have a few extra details for you guys. Stephanie Shepard will be playing Perla Tanaka, a law associate tasked with defending her boss, Davis McLean, against multiple charges. So Davis has multiple charges against him, and I think we all know there really is a long list of shady shit he's done during his time on Ghost. I also wouldn't be surprised if this was one of the elements Sachs left for Junior on this flash drive. Cooper Sachs really was a slimy character who had access to a lot of resources and documents over at Davis's firm, so Sachs might have actually been one who was behind this. Now elsewhere with Davis, we've got him in a meeting with Tariq and Brayden at a warehouse of some sort, and Davis will find himself in between two worlds in season 4. There's his corporate world, but he's also going to embrace this criminal side. But as Davis does, he's always going to be looking out for number one, and whatever benefits him the most, and that's the side he's always going to pick. So if I were in Tariq and Brayden's shoes, I would be very careful working around Davis. His loyalty in my opinion, does come with a price. Now elsewhere, we've got Detective Don Carter who doesn't look like he's here to play games. His wife was killed in a crossfire between two rival drug gangs, and so he's here with a real motivation. I also wouldn't be surprised if he was one of the villains for season 4, because he's going to cause a real stir. But who is arrested here could be really be anyone, it's really too early to say, but I do expect him to be hot on the Tahada's heels, hot on Tariq and Brayden's heels, and also Effie's. Now elsewhere with Detective Don Carter, we've also got details in regards to his entire team. We've got Aaron Dean who will be playing Detective Nico Calder, and Alison Luff will be playing Detective Felicia Lewis, who are two officers on Carter's drug task force. So there will be a few new players when it comes to law enforcement, whether it makes a difference and whether they're able to get a win come the end of season 4. Let's wait and see. Let's see if Carter can change law enforcement's fortunes. Now what this means for characters like Jenny Sullivan, Blanca Rodriguez and Junior, I do think they still have a part to play in the storyline in some shape or form. I think Jenny Sullivan will be hellbent on getting revenge for Sax. For Junior, there's a storyline around the flash drive, but with Blanca Rodriguez, the jury's really open because I for one wouldn't be surprised to see her cross over to Chicago in force. But that's a breakdown of our first look at Power Book 2 Go Season 4 and there was a lot to take in. There's new characters, new descriptions and a whole host of new pictures. So the floor is now yours, drop all your thoughts and comments down below in the comment section and let me know your thoughts on the first new look images and new details for season 4. 
drop all your comments down below in the comment section. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.